community, rabbi, scholars, and students from the New York, New Jersey area. We are here, we are troubled and disturbed when war criminal Netanyahu stands up to address the Congress of the United States. He comes here supposedly representing all Jews and claiming that the Jewish religion supposedly condones his movement and the actions it carries out. He claims that the Jewish people are supposedly in a danger from their supposed enemies, the Palestinians, that supposedly want to drive us all into the sea. This is misleading propaganda in order to drive American politicians to blind support to what he calls the supposed self-defense. Zionism does not represent Judaism. Judaism is a religion a religion only, while Zionism is a purely political movement. The State of Israel does not represent world Jewry. We have masses of Jewish people worldwide who publicly oppose, condemn everything Israel stands for. We will free Palestine and Palestine will free us. And we will stop this genocide together. The American people do not want this genocide. The people of the world do not want this genocide. The people, the students on our campuses do not want this genocide. Everybody of the United Nations does not want this genocide. We will stand together and we will stop it. And we are here to tell Congress how dare you invite this criminal into the people's house? This criminal responsible for the murder of 40,000 Gazans, 16,000 of them children, hundreds of healthcare and aid workers and teachers and academics and journalists. And with a full accounting, it's not 40,000, it's 200,000. We say no more. We say the genocide stops here, and it stops now. In the spirit of working class solidarity and justice, the American Postal Workers Union, AFL-CIO, stands with humanity and the suffering people, workers and unions of Gaza and calling for a long overdue ceasefire and massive humanitarian aid to the 2.3 million people of Gaza, walled in, displaced, homeless, bombed, killed, injured, diseased, and starving behind the war crimes of the Netanyahu Israeli government, fully backed by U.S. military aid. Just, just last week in our convention, we voted, quote, 
We call on the U.S. government to halt all military aid to the Israeli government and to stop using our tax dollars for more war. End of quote. The billionaire class and the corporations never pay their fair share of taxes, if at all. But workers do. And our tax dollars should never be used to bomb, maim, and kill innocent children, women, and men of Gaza, nor to enrich the U.S. military-industrial complex. It is shameful that Netanyahu, already charged with genocide and war crimes by the International Court of Justice and with the blood of tens of thousands of children on his hands, has been invited by both the Democratic and Republican leadership to address Congress. This is but another bipartisan green light, along with billions more of military aid, to continue the carnage and brutality and is increasing the very real danger of a wider war. The, the American Postal Workers Union is proud to have joined with other national unions, including the United Auto Workers, United Electrical Workers, the Association of Flight Attendants, the National Nurses Union, International Union of Painters, and, and the National Education Association in the National Labor Network for a Ceasefire. Why is a ceasefire and an end to armed shipments to Israel a labor issue? I'll tell you why. Because auto workers in Dearborn, Michigan have been personally affected by this issue and have demanded that their union and their government stop funding a genocide. Because academic workers all across the country and countless campuses in almost every state of this country have been protesting for their literal right of free speech to call on their universities to divest and to be held accountable. On this day, 102 years ago, the League of Nations assigned the mandate of Palestine to Britain with the 1918 Balfour Declaration. This would be the start of Israel's brutal occupation of Palestine, 102 years ago. Last week, the International Court of Justice declared the Israeli occupation of Gaza, the West Bank, and East Jerusalem illegal. It also unequivocally found that Israel is committing apartheid against Palestinians in the occupied Palestinian territories. This ruling is not just a validation for what we Palestinians have been screaming for decades. It is a clarion call to the world that the time for action has been overdue. For too long, Palestinians have endured unspeakable suffering under the shadow of occupation, settler colonialism, and apartheid. The ICJ's decision shines a light on the truth that has been obscured by political maneuvering and willful, willful ignorance. Yet the true measure of justice will be seen not in the proclamation of law, but in its enforcement. Over and over we've been forced to confront a damning reality. The United States has played a central role in enabling Israel's genocidal campaign in Gaza and its broader occupation of Palestine. Our tax dollars fund the bombs that rain down on Palestinians. Our political leaders offer unwavering support to a regime that systematically oppresses and brutalizes an entire people, now recognized by international law. For Congress to allow a war criminal like Bibi to enter the halls of our legislative chambers, let alone our country, is nothing short of disgraceful. Netanyahu had charges brought against him not three months ago, not four months ago, not on October 7th, but in 2019, he had charges brought against him. This is not a year-long conflict. This is not a six-month, eight-month. This is decades. This is generations of genocide against the Palestinian people. Shame. This is not the first time 
that this country has tried to legitimize war criminals, legitimize war crimes at the expense of the American people. This is not the first. We demand, we want to make it clear, the demands of the people. We want to make it so clear that every step that this government takes to justify war is a direct contradiction to the wants and needs of these of the American people. As my sister just said, we in this country, we have people who can't read. We have cop cities being built. We have education being defunded year after budget year. We are in the streets saying fund our schools, fund our communities, keep our libraries open. We are crying to keep open libraries while they are sitting in that building sending billions of dollars, $150 billion since 1948 to drop bombs on children. Shame. The irony is that Cop City built these metal cages to keep us, the people, out to protect the guilty. But what they don't realize is that we are the ones here, free with the truth and calling for justice, and they are the cowards, captive, literally and figuratively. They are the ones who will forever be imprisoned in the legacy of genocide. We see you, we see you. Liberation is inevitable and accountability is coming. We protest a genocidal maniac, his supporters and enablers and demand his arrest, but we will not give them the attention they so crave because despite them, we are here to uplift and center the Palestinian people in Gaza, in Tul Karim, in Al Khalil, in Jenin, in Nablus, in Ramallah, in Yafa, in Haifa, in Bisan, in Bethlehem, in Imrashrash, in Jericho, in Al Quds, and all Palestinians and Palestinians in refugee camps. stand with you against death and to proclaim life, to stand against destruction and proclaim peace, to stand against the United States Congress welcoming Benjamin Netanyahu and to proclaim there is another way. Shame. 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 There is, there is no place in this land of the free and home of the brave for a war criminal to speak to the most powerful people in our nation. There is no place for Netanyahu, for whom the International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant to address Congress and beseech our government for our tax dollars to add to a death toll already exceeding 40,000 human lives. Shame! I know it's a sad day, a sad day in American history. You know why? Because there is a war criminal in town. They call him a prime minister, but what do we call him? A criminal. A criminal is at loose on Capitol Hill. Shame on our Congress, on the leadership. Instead of getting his testimony today, he should be delivered to The Hague to give his testimony about his war crimes over there. Ladies and gentlemen, this war criminal Netanyahu has a long history of crimes against humanity, has a long history of manipulating our own government and exploiting America's generosity.
For the past 30 years, he has been actively manipulating our government. We are fighting for our freedom. We are fighting for our lands. For our rights. We are fighting for our stolen past, but most especially for our liberated future. We reject Netanyahu not because he is more brutal or racist than those before him. We reject Netanyahu because he's exactly the manifestation of the colonial project known as Zionism. We reject Genocide Joe and the U.S. government's support of this monstrosity historically and today. Taxpayers here, you all in this crowd, you all joining us on the live stream, you all joining us free of the internet are being bamboozled. We are told there's not enough money for our schools or teachers' salaries. There's not enough funding for health care in the United States. There's not enough funding for the houseless members of our community. Instead, they expand police budgets while building cop city theme parks to continue to militarize our neighborhoods. They violate international law, U.S. law, and the laws of human dignity in order to continue their ruthless brutality. We are here to say, stop arming Israel! Back in 2015, I was here in Washington, D.C., demonstrating against Netanyahu's visit while we have a killing machine against the children. Gaza has been under a slow motion genocide for 17 years. And now we are in the most live stream, fast motion genocide in our history. I am also here uh, representing the plaintiffs and families uh, of all of Palestine, of all of the indigenous people of Palestine. The families of victims of, who were murdered without compunction, without remorse, without contrite, who have been murdered in a live stream. Everyone can see our, our, uh, our struggle. And so, uh, you know, you have, you have been aware Gaza became a mortuary. Gaza became a graveyard. But Gaza will still be engraved in our lives. I lived all of my entire life in Gaza. And we really... If you love, if you come to Palestine, you will fall in love with Gaza. We have the, we have the beautiful beach. We have the generous mother that I couldn't talk with her for the last 200 days. All of my aunts are really spread all over Gaza, internally displaced for time and time again. It reminds us of 1948 Nakba, where 800,000 people were kicked out, forcefully kicked out from their indigenous land. It will be a reminder to us as indigenous people. Uh, so that's why I felt it is the deepest honor of my life to be a plaintiff of the genocide case against Biden, Austin, and Lincoln for aiding and abetting genocide and fomenting genocide. Remember the first days. 